I want to say hi, everybody. I'm a thankful uh, for my Savior, Jesus, who continues to help me see that I'm a broken person who is working on being less fearful and experiencing victories over listening to false beliefs and negative thoughts. And my name is Tanya. Hey, Tanya. Hey, everybody. So tonight is the really fun lesson that we all look forward to, and that is our relapse lesson. <laughs> But before we begin, I want to start with something positive. I want to tell you that if there's one thing I do know about relapses, and that is they are avoidable. And I even have proof that they're avoidable. But I know what you're thinking at this moment. You're probably sitting in the audience thinking that girl up there is one French fry short of a Happy Meal because there's no way that can happen. But I'm telling you, it is possible. So uh, before I get into sharing the proof with you, I want to ask you a question. And that question is, what comes before the relapse? What comes before we fall? What happens before we sin? Okay. Temptation. Thank you. Yes. Temptation. Temptation always precedes relapse. And what that means is the battle isn't the relapse. If we relapsed, we're, it, we've done it. We're, we're done. We did it. You can't stop once you've relapsed. But the temptation that precedes it is where we can start the battle, where we can make a decision not to give in to relapse and to make the changes or decisions or choices not to. And so I'm beginning with that and beginning with pointing out where the battle begins in temptation because if we understand that and we recognize when we are being tempted then we can prevent the relapse from happening. So that's the proof I'm going to give you tonight is how to deal with temptation. Because if we know how to deal with that, then we can prevent ourselves from falling into the traps of the enemy. And so the, the uh, scripture I want to begin with tonight is Jesus about Jesus in Matthew uh, chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Because he went through a period of being tempted by Satan. And because of his example, we got the proof, like I mentioned already, that we don't have to fall in temptation if we follow the things that he did. So I'm going to quickly just do a really quick brief overview of what Jesus did to handle temptation when he was being tempted. And the story begins in Matthew 4 by saying Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and was hungry. And so when I read that, the first thing that that kind of demonstrated and showed me was the enemy's not a fool. He knows when to get us. He knows when we're weak, when we're tired, when we're vulnerable. And in this case, when Jesus was hungry, and I'm assuming if he hadn't eaten for 40 days and he was hungry, he was probably also weak and tired at the same time. Anyhow, in his craftiness, he uh, challenged Jesus. He came to him, and, and that's the other thing. He came at the end of the 40 days. He didn't come at the beginning of the starting of the fast. He came when he was vulnerable, right? And so he came to him and he decided to challenge him in his craftiness. And he began by saying, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. And Jesus replied to him saying, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And the good news is Jesus knew how to avoid falling into this trap of the enemy. But I just find it interesting that he began his challenge to him by challenging who he was. If you are the son of God. He already knew he was the son of God. And, and the, the thing I love is Jesus didn't even respond. He didn't even reply. He didn't even defend himself because he knew that Satan already knew who he was. But this is one of the ways we can fall into the traps of our temptations as we listen to what somebody says and we let it push us to do something that we probably don't want to or shouldn't. But anyhow, Jesus avoided falling into the trap of the enemy and his whole soul survival wasn't just food and he knew that as well, but it was relying on God's word. And when we're, when we're tempted to take care of our own needs or fix our own problems or to try and change ourselves on our own, we're just setting ourselves up to try to live or go back living in self-sufficiency mode which is part of what leads us to relapse to begin with. We have to go back to God's word to gain the power and strength to surrender it all and to follow God's battle plan for our success. So when that failed and didn't work, he decided, uh, Satan took him to a different place to try the temp a different temptation. This time he took him to a holy city and he had him stand on the highest point of the temple and he said, and again he starts it, if you are the son of God, Throw yourself down from the highest point of this temple. Then God will send his angels to lift you up. Keep your foot from striking the ground. And by the way, you're his son. You, you know, he's going to show you special treatment. You know, if you're really his son, you know, you should just do this because God's going to take care of you. Now that's the Tanya added on version there. 
But Jesus replied to this temptation by saying, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And we need to make sure that we don't put ourselves in risky situations. Even Jesus, who is God's son, didn't take advantage of his relationship with his father to prove to Satan that God would or could protect him. And we have to watch out that we don't rationalize by putting ourselves in risky situations that we allow ourselves to fall into, thinking that somehow God's going to show up and protect us or rescue us from our poor choices. Jesus didn't, and we shouldn't either. So when that one failed, the, the enemy decided to try one more thing. He thought for sure this was the one that was going to get Jesus and to um, do what he wanted. And so the last thing he said to him, this time he didn't start out if you're the son of God, because I think he figured out that didn't work. So he took him and he took him, it says, Jesus to a very high mountaintop, and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and, um, and their splendor. And he said to him, if you will bow down, and worship me, I will give you all of this. And for this, Jesus, to this, Jesus replied, Away from me, Satan, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You know, here the enemy is offering Jesus money, power, fame. I mean, he could have probably had the most numbers of Facebook followers and Instagram followers and likes ever, the best reality TV show ever that they were around back then. But I mean, he was offered everything that people look at today and think that's what they want. And, and it could buy anything he want, and, you know, he could have had it everything. But instead, what Jesus said is, um, we have to worship and serve God only. And thankfully, he didn't go for it. Because I know we're all tempted at different times. We're all tempted in different ways to do things, to compromise our integrity, to gain financial uh, to gain financially, to gain relationally, or maybe to get a step up over others. There's many different r ways and reasons why we might compromise our integrity or our values. But we have to ask ourselves, is it worth the cost? Jesus didn't even consider it and responded it by making clear Satan's presence wasn't welcomed and he would only worship and serve the Lord. So if you're being tempted by the world, tell the enemy to leave and worship the Lord, the o Lord only. And our living God. So we need to keep this in mind that there are ways to avoid temptation and not give in to it. And we need to follow the things that Jesus did. And we're going to recap that. And this is the first part of your fill-ins on your uh, handouts tonight. Because we need to remember these are the times we are easily tempted. And the first one is we are, when we are easily tempted, when we are vulnerable or weak. But we can overcome temptation by remembering God's word. We are easily tempted when we put ourselves in risky situations, but we can overcome by remembering not to test God. And we can also be easily tempted when we become willing to compromise, but we can overcome by worshiping and serving God only. So we have to recognize that there's times that we will be tempted and we need to watch out if we're putting ourselves into one of these situations, if we're vulnerable at risky in a risky compromising situation or compromising something that we know we shouldn't do to gain something we want. And by knowing the enemy's tactics, his MO, if you want to call it that, we can be prepared to not give in when temptation comes. Jesus was ready and knew it to do and we can too. And so that's why tonight's principle that we're going over is so vital to our recovery and to keep our progress going and moving forward. Because if, this, if we put this principle into practice, we will help safeguard ourselves against when we're, the temptation happens. Because it's going to. And it's principle seven. It says, reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer in order to know God and his will for my life and to gain the power to follow his will. And step 11 that goes with it, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and power to carry it out. It corresponds with the verse from Colossians 3.16, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. So tonight's acronym as we go through it is the relapse prevention plan. And if we learn it well, we're going to have a plan of how to recognize those moments where we may be vulnerable to relapse. So we're going to begin with the first letter in our relapse prevention plan, which is R, and it's recognize your weak points. 
And the truth is, we all have stress in our life. And we're all, at different times, feel stress over our family, our jobs, our spouses, our kids, health crisis, finances. And when we're stressed over certain things, we're going to be tempted to fall back into our addictions or compulsive behaviors to cope. And that's the perfect storm for a relapse. And this is the time where I try to stop and do what I call a heart checkup. And I already have it written in your bulletin for you because this is where we have to stop and ask yourself when we're stressed. Are we hurting? Are we exhausted? Are we angry? Are we resentful? Or are we tense? And if you answered yes to any of those, this is when you already know I need to take action right now. That should be your red flag that I need to take a step and do one of my recovery steps or principles. You should be praying and asking for God's help. You should be reaching out to your sponsor or accountability partners, and you should be using the tools you've learned here in CR to avoid your relapse. Because if you're feeling one of those things, you're vulnerable. Just like I was with Jesus, he was vulnerable when he was hungry. If we're feeling one of those stressors in our life, we're vulnerable too. We need to be able to recognize that. And if we, one of the ways we can overcome our temptations is if we're honest about where we're at, where we are at, and own the truth that we feel weak. The next letter in our prevention plan, relapse prevention plan is E, establish escape routes. We got to know what we need to do when we're tempted. If we plan to fail, we can plan to, I'm sorry, if we fail to plan, we can plan to fail. We have to have a plan. We need to know what our escape routes are. And thankfully, if we pray, we can also ask God to help intervene to show us the way out when we're tempted. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. I have to say, this verse gives me hope. And it gives me encouragement, but at the same time, sometimes I wish it was written that when I'm tempted, that God would just take it away or remove it or deal with it for me. But that's not his plan, and that's not what his word says. And so he said he's going to provide a way out. So what does that mean? It, we still have a choice. Even when God shows us the way out, he might put on our mind or heart, call your sponsor. He might put on your mind or heart, run, get out of there, don't stay. He might put on your mind or heart, turn off that computer, go do something, go pick up your Bible. Whatever it is, we still have a choice. We still got to take action, and we still, he still gives us that choice to do it. He doesn't do our recovery for us. We have to choose to take his way out that he provides. And then the next letter of prevention plan is L, is listen to your support team. One way out of temptation is to reach out and call our, either our sponsors or accountability partners. We need to tell them what is happening, what is going on, and then we need to listen. Now, the first thing is they're going to be listening to you, and they're going to be praying for you. But then they can help you devise what step or what principle do you need to implement right now to help deal with, with what you're facing. Because we're not therapists or counselors in here. That's not our job, and that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to help direct each other back to working these steps and principles. And what is, the, what is it we need to do? And they can help us to see what that is. And also, if you've been sharing with your sponsor or accountability partners for a while, they're going to get to know you. They're going to be able to recognize when your triggers are being taking you close to a relapse, when you might be walking that fine line between keeping your recovery moving forward and falling off the wagon. And so it's important to listen to them because they may hear something in you where you are allowing what's happening to you or your circumstances to take you to a bad place. I love this verse because it shows why support is so important in our recoveries. It's Proverbs 27, 17. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. It doesn't say you need 12 people. It doesn't say you need 50 people or 100 people. It says one person can help sharpen another. That's why it's so valuable to have that support, to have that sponsor, to have that accountability partner, people you can reach out to because we help each other grow. We help each other stay the course. And sometimes they can offer insight and in what might be pushing us towards our fall. Next level, uh, next letter in our, our prevention plan is A. It's acknowledge your risk level. Now, I don't know about you, but I think sometimes I've been, in, look like this guy on the screen. Putting myself in risky situations that's obvious to others, 
but somehow we convince ourselves it's not a big deal or we can handle it or nothing bad's really going to happen. So I hope you enjoy the, the, the scenery I've been giving you guys tonight. I'm trying to give you lots of fun stuff. But anyway, it's not a good plan to put ourselves in uh, risky places in, in um, and we need to be able to evaluate our risk levels because that's going to help us see where we're at in our recoveries. And if we're going to a dangerous place or if we're close to the line of relapse or, or uh, losing the momentum we've been gaining working our recoveries here. And I'm going to take a sidetrack here for just a second because there's four risk levels when you're working your recovery. And if we know what those four risk levels are and we look and evaluate ourselves and see where we're at, we can see if we're slowly moving into a place where we're headed towards a relapse. Relapse, And so the first risk level I want to mention tonight is complacency. And complacency typically comes after we've been working our recoveries and we're experiencing some victory over our hurts, habits, or hangups. And with that progress, our pain level reduces. And things just don't feel as bad. It's like the guy up here hugging himself. He just feels good about himself. He's been making progress and his pain's not as bad. And... We just are so happy, and, and uh, we begin to think we arrive, and so we slack off on some of our new habits we incorporated, like we might start skipping meetings on Tuesday nights, or maybe we don't go to share groups, or maybe we stop reaching out to our sponsor and accountability partners. And slowly over time, what will happen through our complacency is we're going to slip back into a self-sufficiency mode. And so we have to look at how do we, can we stop ourselves from slipping into that self-sufficiency mode? I know for me, I have to be involved in CR. I have to be in leadership in CR because I am so good at coming up with excuses. I could come up with a hundred reasons why not to be here on most Tuesday nights. And I have to be in leadership. I have to be a part of the program because I know myself and I know I can't keep myself accountable if I wasn't involved. And so we have to figure out what does it take to keep you involved, to keep you working your recovery, to help you maintain the progress you made. And so you have to ask yourself that and, and find where you can get involved to keep you moving forward. Because if we don't catch ourselves when we're slipping into this complacency mode or way, or made, mode or way of life, we're going to eventually find ourselves at risk level number two, confusion. Now, confusion happens when we start that dialogue in our head I was talking about earlier, where the temptation begins and we're debating or considering or even rationalizing our choices. Because some of our confusing conversations could sound like this. I can handle going to the bar and just eating a sandwich. I can go back home into abusive relationship and be okay. My sponsor and accountability partner, they're too busy. So I can handle this all on my own. Or how about I can go to Vegas and not gamble. Whatever it is. If we become complacent in our, in our recovery, we can easily begin to confuse the truth and fall prey to the temptation when it comes. So you gotta watch out if you're having these conversations with yourself and otherwise you're gonna find yourself falling into risk level number three, compromise. So this is the point where we've already given in to the temptation, we've crossed the line from thinking about it to doing it, we didn't follow through on pursuing our escape routes and we have relapsed. We have decided to test our willpower and lost. So now we got to face the music of what just happened as we find ourselves in risk level number four, which is catastrophe. We've known we've blown it, but now we have to decide how are we going to face the music? How do we deal with our consequences? Because the truth is, it's not the end of the world. It is another wake-up call, though, that we still have more work to do. And the good news is our God is a forgiving God and there's nothing we can do to lose his love for us. Falling down doesn't make you a failure. It's when we stay down. And that's when our failures get the best of us. So when we fall down, it's a great time to take stock in how we got there and devise a new battle plan of what we need to do differently next time. And so tonight in your share groups, if you find yourself somewhere in that, in that list of risk levels, share about that. If you're struggling right now, share about that. This is a great place, opportunity. That's one of the benefits of a share group to talk about your struggle and get that out, get accountability, talk about it so others know what's going on with you. Don't keep it a secret. We're as sick as our secrets. And we got to be able to share about what's going on and what we're struggling with so we can keep moving forward and let others in on what's happening. Now, the next letter, we're going to go back to our acronym now. The next letter in our, uh, to 
work on our prevention plan is P, which is to pray and read your Bible daily. In Matthew 26, 41, it says, Watch and pray so you will not fall into temptation, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We got to be ready to do battle. And the best way to do that is to be praying and reading our Bible regularly. As we work on improving our, our conscious contact with God, we're able to hear from him more clearly and to find the help and the hope we need when we're tempted. So make an appointment to spend as much time with God as you can. He wants to help us to be conquerors. But to accomplish that, we got to know him. We need to know what his word says, and we need to know what our battle plans are. The next letter in our prevention plan is S, for serve others, especially the newcomers. Jesus told us in Ephesians 6 and 7, verse 7, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. You know, I was reminded of the importance of serving others when Charlotte did her testimony. And in it, she mentioned the positive impact it had on her when she very first came to CR. Uh, apparently, I welcomed her and I got her food. Now, for those of you who weren't here pre-COVID, we used to have dinner before CR. Then COVID hit and we had to stop dinner for right now. But I guess I got her dinner that night. And I'm not telling the story to pat myself on the back or make myself look good because that's not the point. <laughs> I do to you, so I deserve it. <laughs> anyway, but, and as a matter of fact, I was really surprised to hear it in her testimony, but it showed me how important and meaningful something so small can be to somebody else. And it is scary walking through these doors for the first time for many. And they can feel like they won't fit in or they don't belong or they're the only ones with struggles or problems and nobody has the, the kind of issues they do. And we need to make them feel welcomed so that they know they can come here, that this is a safe place. And the small, doing small, you don't have to do anything big. That's, that's where her testimony reminded me of. It wasn't anything big that I did that made her feel welcomed here, that she wanted to come back. And so thank you for reminding me through your story that that helped you and made a difference. The next letter in our prevention plan is to enjoy the victories you've been given. We need to enjoy our victories. We need to celebrate our small and big successes along the road to recovery. We need to have friends to do our little Seinfeld dance with. Woo enjoy the excitement of what God's doing in our life. You got to be sure to tell others. You know, we had uh, up here tonight. I know, Jeannie, and I remember what you shared with me, and I'm excited. I, I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not going to tell everybody. It needs to be part of your testimony. But it's exciting when you hear God show up and answer uh answer prayers, answer uh, giving you hope, giving you a, ch a different choice or helping you make different choices and helping you find recovery as you work it here. And we need to share about those things. Sometimes we share it up here when we get a chip, you know, we get a monthly or then after that on the, uh, for the first year and then after that's every year. And when we share about those victories up here on this platform, you never know what person in this room could be struggling with the same thing that you just encouraged tonight because you talked about it. When you share about your victories in the share groups, the same thing. You don't know who you might encourage tonight because they might think, be thinking they're the only person that struggles with that. But because you talked about having victory and that they know they're not alone. So you got to take advantage, share your victory, celebrate it with each other, tell somebody, tell your sponsor, especially and your accountability partners, so they can be excited for you and you can do your little Seinfeld dance together. And with that, I'd like to wrap up with the scripture from Jeremiah 33, 6. It says, nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. And the truth is, God wants us to experience peace and security in our lives. And we can have that if we seek him, if we learn how to deal with temptation, if we follow Jesus' example, if we learn to recognize what our risk levels and we're vulnerable when we're putting ourselves in risky situations, when we're close to compromise, and take advantage of the tools we're learning here in Celebrate Recovery to help us in putting those steps and principles into place in our lives and reaching out as we need to share with somebody so we can learn how to continue to support each other, help each other, and grow together in our walks with Christ. And one of the things I did in your uh, outline tonight is at the back, back there, I put down uh, just a short abbreviation of prevention uh, relapse habits. And how to prevent relapse evaluation. If you want to use those tonight in your share groups, you can. If you want to answer those questions, you can. Um, or just talk about where you're at and what maybe what you need to implement in your life to continue to prevent relapse, you can. Uh, it's just there to help you if you want to use them.